Hello everyone. We are here again to meet two more people who will participate in the Polyglota 2020. And we have mm -hmm. Sanyo Santos and Noelia Borges. Hello, are you? Yes. Hi. Yes. Yes, I can follow you. Uh, Sanyo, uh, where are you from and what do you do for a living? Okay, I'm from Salvador, Bahia. And I'm a teacher at the moment. Am I also a PhD student? And no, but he intends, he intends to be a professor because next year I'll probably be retired and uh, <laughs> I hope he can replace me. Oh, I, so I'm, keep, I'm keeping my room at the university, my office for him. <laughs> so you are training <laughs> Sanyu to replace you, is that it? Yeah, no, I'm joking, joking. No, I, I hope he, he can replace me, you, you see? Because he's my advisee, he finished his master's degree, now he's doing his, post, his doctorate. So when he finishes, I hope he can enter the university, you know, to be a professor. Okay, and for how long have you two been working together? Oh, Sanyo has been my researcher for about three four years. years now. Three years now, yes. Yeah, yes. kind of like that. Yeah, almost four. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would like to know what are you going to talk about at Polyglota? What is the symposium about? Yeah, it's about uh, film. Okay, go on, Sanyo. Yeah, it's actually about not just cinema, but um, every single way to tell a story about Ireland. Uh, everybody knows that Ireland is a country that's changing a lot. In the past, uh, their economy was not that strong. And now that they have a strong economy, everybody wants to go to Ireland. Everybody wants to study English in Ireland. Everybody is watching more Irish films, uh, uh, Irish TV series. So it's a country that now has a nation branding much, much stronger than before. Uh, so uh, this symposium uh, aims to dialogue, you know, I think this is a very nice word, uh, mm -hmm. make us dialogue, make us talk about old and new Irish stories, so we can contrast the old Ireland and the new Ireland. Mainly, Sanyo, considering migration. Let's, let's consider migration, okay? Social transformation, globalization. So if you, if you talk about migration, you have to consider the past and the present. Mm. Because in the, in the past, emigration was very strong because Ireland was poor, Ireland uh, underwent famine, People had to leave the country to look for uh, means to survive. And now it, it is the other way around. Now people are coming to Ireland. <laughs> they, they feel that Ireland is the best place to live because Ireland is living be the best time in terms of economy. So it's, it's important for those who are living hard times come to Ireland. Yeah. It does would... matter. It does matter the situation. For example, we have, as you have seen a few weeks ago, we have people who immigrate to Ireland because they, they are fleeing from hard time in the country, from war, mm. from fights, etc. But there are people who come to Ireland to look for better life. Uh, I would like to know if there are many Irish people all around the world. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, mainly in uh, the United States and in Canada, because you yeah. can notice that they celebrate, they usually celebrate St. Patrick's Parade in the United States because of the huge population. Uh, the, the huge Irish population there. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can also see there are many influences uh, in, in the American culture. 
uh, and you can relate it to Ireland, like films, like for example, there's a film called uh, A Quiet Man. There is a film that was uh, written by a guy that mm -hmm. it was recorded in Ireland and in the United States, but the guy was uh, a son of immigrants. So uh, the, the director. So basically, it's it's a country that it, the, the influence it's mostly in UK, in Canada, and United States. There are not that many Irish communities in other places of the planet. Yeah, and let's let's consider Argentina. There are a, a good mm -hmm. number of yes. of uh, Irish people in Argentina. This is the t the title of uh, the next our next lecture online. Uh, the professor uh, Demot from Cork University is going to talk about it. Uh, his view on Irish. In, in Argentina, uh, under his own perspective, what happened to the Irish when they came to Argentina. He's a historian, so I'm very curious in, in listening to his conversation on that particular subject. And regarding the Irish accent <coughs> when they speak English, is it very hard to understand Sometimes, sometimes it's very hard. Yes. There is a film, it's, it's actually available on Netflix. You guys can watch, it's a wonderful film. Uh, it, it received many prizes. It's called Young Offenders, The Young Offenders. It's a marvelous <laughs> film. A marvelous, I think you, you all should watch to understand Ireland. Um, the, it's a film and it was recorded in the, the rural area of Ireland. So it, it has some kind of accent that's quite different from what you usually listen in the capital, Dublin. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very interesting film to watch. Like I had to watch it three times to fully yes. understand it. <laughs> yes, <You know? laughs> this is what I was ready to say, to, to understand the whole meaning you are supposed to, to see, to watch more than once. Mm -hmm. And do we have a, a dialect in Ireland like Gaelic or something like that? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, uh, nowadays they are trying to revive the Gaelic. There is a television, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, broadcasting yes. TV shows in Gaelic. The Irish Film Board is also supporting um, Gaelic filmmakers that want to record films in Gaelic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're trying quite hard to, to, to make the language relevant again. It's, it's not mm -hmm. easy because, because English is such a strong language around the planet. So, mm -hmm. but it, they're, they're really trying, especially um, the, the current president of Ireland. He, he is really connected uh, to issues related to culture. So he always, he's always trying to reinforce the cinema, the, the, the yes. music in Ireland and also the Gaelic language. But you have to stress, Sanyu, that we, are, we do not uh, belong to the field of language. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our field is literature. So yeah. you don't know much about. Yeah. For example, if you consider the play translation written by Brian Frill, uh, you, you can analyze language how he deal, deals with language or dialect in his play. But, uh, but uh, when you read a uh, translation, we are not concerned about language. We are concerned about the subject, which is uh, colonization, how Ireland was colonized by the British. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what should we expect to see uh, being discussed during the symposium on Friday? A lot of variety, a lot of subjects, many different stuff. Uh, you can lead, you're going to hear people talking about uh, Northern <laughs> Ireland. Uh, we are going to hear people talking about cinema. You're going to hear people talking about superheroes. 
So it, it's going to be very, very interesting, guys. If you have the opportunity, watch it. Um, the subjects uh, are not very difficult to understand if you don't, if you do not belong to an academic environment. Um, you, you're going. To, it's going to be something very impressive because not many people know a lot about Ireland. And exactly. we will listen. To <laughs> the only problem is to be love in the end. <laughs> in the end, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may fall in love in the end. That's that's for sure. It's it's very interesting, guys. It's a it's a it's a very unique country. Many people think about Ireland as a country that's very similar to UK because geographically they are very close, but it's a totally different culture. Uh, as a nation, too, they are very different. So please come. You're going to enjoy it quite a lot. And I'm pretty sure you all will fall in love with Ireland. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if there is a question from the audience. Is there anyone who would like to ask a question? Uh, Victor or... Hello. Uh, hello, Victor. I hope you're not seeing beca me because I'm very ugly today. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, are, we can see you. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> Uh, I would uh, like to know something more uh, about uh, something that always interests me in England and uh, uh, the United Kingdom in general, uh, which but, are the pagan cults that uh, mm, they were but, but, used but, to be. I'm there. sorry, but we not talk about the United Kingdom. We are talk about Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there are some in Ireland too. Hmm. Yeah, there, and there also are some. another thing that interests me is Nessie. I beg your pardon? Nessie. The monster from the lake, but it's in Scotland. Oh, but that's not in yeah, Ireland. Because <laughs> I'm not very good in geography. Yeah, but, but uh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, um, Ireland does have a strong connection with the Celtic uh, religion, but they are mainly Catholics nowadays. Okay, but they do, there are some influences, you know? And like, you can, I think mostly in literature, Naila, Naila can talk about that mm -hmm. much better than me for sure. But I think that mostly when it comes to literature, um, the Celtic influence is mostly about, related to the fairy tales. There are many fairy tales yes, uh, yes. Uh, in Irish <clears throat> literature. Yes. If you consider, for example, W.B. Yeats, at the turn of the century, 19th century to the 20th, W.B. Uh, Yeats was the person who was really concerned about revitalization, revival, the Irish folklore. So, he was the person who really uh, produced a material that uh, revitalized Irish uh, past. Yeah. Uh, not, he was not alone, but with a few other people. Okay, go on, son. Yeah, I, I remember yesterday I was reading a short story called The Revenge of the Fairies. And this is very interesting because people believe that the fairies are usually nice and beautiful. They have butterfly wings. And yeah. it's not like that in Ireland. They are evil. They live in the underground. They, 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 they kidnap children and replace with their own child. Uh, it, it's, it's very interesting to, to... There's actually a film about that called The Hollow. And it's not really Irish because it was recorded in, Ar in Ireland. The producer is Irish, but the, the filmmakers, like the writer and the, the director, they are from USA. But it's yes. a very interesting film because you can see like the, how the fairies work, you know, that they, they, they want to kidnap. Yes. They are not very much fairies. Like. <laughs> no, they are evil fairies. Yes. And, and there is also... And the others. If you remember Shakespeare in the in the Tempest, Ariel. Remember, Sanyo, you you saw last year at the Teatro Vila Velha. 
Ariel and Caliban. And uh, there are the spirits. Yeah, they, they were together to, pro to produce something nasty for proper. For, for, I, what's the name I have just said? Prospero, okay? Mm -hmm. So yes. confirm, me, confirm me what you have said. Fairies are not only positive entities, yes. but they are tricky, tricky entities. <laughs> Uh, yes, and I don't remember if it's, uh, I don't really know if it's Irish or not, but I do remember uh, the story of uh, Le Morte d'Arthur. It's medieval it's, times. It's England. La Morte d'Arthur yeah. is, is, is a play written at medieval times. You know, it's, okay. it's from yeah. Britain, yes. Yeah, not yeah. from Ireland. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and for me, Ireland, very... British, it's a, a, a bit confusing. Eh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit confusing indeed because many people still believe that Ireland belongs to the United Kingdom because there is Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom, but the South Ireland is a republic. It's totally different. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Thank you very much, Sanyu. And, uh, uh, Noelia, for <laughs> letting us know a little bit, little bit more about Ireland, and I hope everyone can come on Friday to participate in the symposium about literature and cinema in Ireland. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you then. <laughs>